So I'm in Upminster, that beautiful sort of Art Deco-ish building there. It's worth coming to Upminster just to go for a wimpy. Can't be many of them left. So today, I'd actually, I've just caught the train out to Upminster and I'm walking east. So who knows where I'll end up. <clears throat> From here, I think I'm gonna to head towards Orsett. But then I'm off the map. I've got no maps really beyond here. So if I find the Thames, I can just maybe follow the river. But with my directional skills, you never know. These first few miles are usually the most difficult, I find, on these walks out of London. It's just uh, getting some mileage behind you before you break into the rhythm of the walk. Breaching the M25 is always an important point on a walk out of London. Escaping the concrete collar. This is one of the least enjoyable things about walking out of London is when you hit these stretches of road, that are very narrow lanes, no footpath here, no footpath leading across the fields, and cars that use it as a kind of racetrack. I've never been so pleased to see a footpath. However, it just leads into dense undergrowth. Oh well, do the best they can. Otherwise it's walking along a narrow lane with no footpath and lots of cars. And that footpath leads around the edge of this cornfield. Wow, look at that. And then it goes around the edge of this meadow here. I think that was St Mary's Lane back there that I turned off. Now across a railway. Coming that way. Nothing coming that way. Okay, here we go. So I guess the footpath must go this way. Kind of lost my direction now, but never mind. It's very nice. You can tell. Look how deep it is. You can tell this footpath hasn't been used for a while. I'm walking about an hour now, just over an hour and ten minutes. It's just east out of Upminster and now I'm just crossed a train line about one minute before the train came. And now I'm ploughing through these really overgrown footpaths next to fields of swaying corn. So the adventure has begun I think. <laughs> Look at those skies. Eastern skies. Bridge over the A12. Still heading east. From one extreme to the other. That field walk was quite hard work actually in the end. The farmer clearly didn't want someone walking on that footpath. Now I'm on the I'm on the A127 now, which heads to South End. Hopefully one of those pedestrians will be me. So I'm kind of on the wrong side of this road, but impossible to get across it. Paying attention, that's where you would end up. It's after two o'clock, I think we've been walking about over three hours now. Essex, it's a frustrating place to walk. They don't want you walking across the farmland, it's always closed off, keep out, fuck off 
quite frustrating. Another road. These long roads. Had to be done though. And I feel today I could have a good ending to it yet. Yeah. Long way to go. Oh, just as I had enough walk along the road, I find this bridle way. What a gift. I don't even know where it goes, but I don't really care. <laughs> I'm going along it. I'm just on the edge of a place called Landon. Vaguely near Basildon. Here's where that bridle way goes in one direction. And this is the way I'm going here. Oh, wow. metal box that's been smashed open. This is a really beautiful little path. Lovely and cool on a hot day. Lovely bit of woodland on the edge of, uh, I think it's called Langdon Recreation Ground, or I think this might be Langdon Nature Reserve. I don't think I'm a million miles from Stamford La Hope now. Well, I say not a million miles, about four miles. Which I should be able to do through woodland at least half the way, so it could be quite pleasant. But of course, I do have a knack of losing my way in the woods and losing my sense of direction, so don't be surprised if I end up back where I started. I guess I go down here. Moving into late afternoon now, which is always the best time of the day, late afternoon, early evening. Favourite time when out walking. So along this footpath that the farmer has helpfully cut right across the middle of his foot <laughs> cornfield. This is gonna be fun. So this is a reward for having to walk along the A127 in the midday heat. This footpath across a cornfield near Basildon. I had a bit of a a moan about walking in Essex back there on the way into Langdon. I have to say, I take it all back. This has been an absolute joy. More than compensates for it. My apologies, Essex. And I have to say, that is completely confusing. Um, looks like I go back the way I just came. One Tree Hill, Stanford La Hope. That way. Because I have no faith in my own sense of direction, I'm, I'm using the compass on my phone. And I have to say, it's saying this is sort of east, southeast, which is kind of where I want to go, but my instincts think that's the opposite direction. <laughs> this is nuts, isn't it? You know, even if it's not the right way, it's a way, isn't it? What is the right way, anyway? Right, onward. Down this track. So I've come across the cornfield, slightly off the footpath. And reach the edge of the field. There's a lovely little stream running down here. Isn't that beautiful? In the cool shade. I 
and I find uh, the footpath again <laughs> stands walks so hopefully that'll get me on the way to the estuary how many times have I said that oh well good bus it lasted now back onto a little bit of road hell Here in microcosm is what you have to deal with when you walk out of London directly in a straight line. You get this kind of mashup of A roads and B roads and roundabouts you've got to navigate and they don't really look at this fucking footpath they provide for you. And if you try to cut across the field there you'd hit the railway lines. So you're always hitting these kind of barriers that are trying to stop you traverse across the landscape. Church Hill, Stamford La Hope. Now, cash loans, checks cashed. When I uh, set off today, I didn't really have any idea where to go, but I had this vague feeling of wanting to kind of end up somewhere out along the Thames Estuary. I started <laughs> quite a long way away from the Thames Estuary, really. But I'm now walking down Wharf Road, which after walking for six and a half hours is uh, quite exciting. You look in the distance in that field, you'll see some metal arms sticking up behind the swaying grasses here. I think that is the new dock out on the estuary, the new mega container port. in mind for the end of my walk. It's exactly where I saw myself walking into the sunset. So apparently this was used for uh, salt production from the Iron Age through to the late Roman period. Interesting. See the footpath continues alongside the wall here, skirting this bit of marshland. many footpaths you have to climb up a metal <laughs> ladder at the end of it right. up we go I've got a funny feeling and that wasn't really a footpath look I've ended up in this kind of cul-de-sac beside the railway line same other way hmm Do a walk along here? Surely not. You never know. Let's give it a walk. Let's walk 20 yards, see what happens. Well, I just scrambled up over that wall over to here. Now, God knows where I am now. How I exit from here. I think there's a road up there. Oh, I've hurt my knee. If I'd have fallen back then. Onto those rocks, I would have been in a bit of trouble, I think. There might be a little bit of trouble up here. So I've ended up at the gates of DP World, which is an enormous container shipping terminal. I think it's owned by the sovereign uh, government of Dubai, I think. Like everything else. This is eerie, isn't it? Look. Not a soul around. Not a car moving. Not a person on the landscape. Just the birds. Here we 
mean, this is totally surreal. Still not a soul around, look. This reminds me a little bit of the road out to Beckton, actually, so it's got parallels. Very strange, though. It's got to be one of the most uncanny places. Well, this is one of the strangest places I've ever walked. And I've walked on top of an active volcano before. This takes the biscuit. My options for getting home don't look good. It's that kind of the day. It's about seven o'clock. I don't know if you can, I'm going to hit a river eventually, if I keep going. I think it's called the River Vange. I don't know if you can get across it down here. So uh, it means I have to turn and walk <laughs> quite a long way up to the next station. I think something like 10 miles. Eight miles, maybe. I don't know. Let's plunge into the unknown, seize the day and all that nonsense. Just I can't stop going forward. That's a lot of information to take in. But uh, I think I get the gist of it. Nice little river leading away there. A stream or a river. So, looks like this is the end of the road here be denied a sunset by the Thames. That's a shame. Oh well. Wow, what do I do now? Let me out of DP World. Well, after everything I've been through on this walk, it seems very apt that right at the end of it, I've got to clamber over this barbed wire <laughs> through this field. And I think there's a gate over there where I can get onto the road. It was difficult <laughs> negotiating that barbed wire fence. Two person job, that is. Tore my shirt in the process. Hopefully, hopefully straightforward now. Over this fence. There's the road. Beautiful golden sunset on the cornfield. What more can you want at the end of a walk? 